Okay, now that we know about a little bit about electron arrangement, we're going to look at some periodic properties. And the reason why we look at periodic properties after we look at electron arrangement is because the elect arrangement of electrons determines for a large part some of the trends that we see on the periodic table. Um, and the periodic table is called periodic because there are regular repeating patterns on the periodic table. Some of them are listed here in the second bullet. We're going to look at a few others. The first one we're going to look at is atomic radius. Atomic radius, definition right here, basically since two atoms that are bonded together are not perfect spheres, the radius is going to be slightly less than the radius of this atom if it were by itself and if it were a perfect sphere. But that's your technical definition of the radius. So there are two trends we notice. One is that atomic radius increases from top to bottom within a group, which means as you go down the group, the radius goes up. And that has to do with the value of n. Remember that each period on the periodic table, each row, represents the next higher energy level. So as we go down a group, we're going into higher and higher energy levels. The n value is increasing, and by definition, that means the electrons are further away. The other trend we can look at is what happens as we go from left to right across a period. Atomic radius actually decreases as you go from left to right. So as we go from left to right across the periodic table, from group 1 to group 18, the radius goes down. So let's take a look at why that is, because that isn't intuitively obvious. Okay. So what we're looking at is what is going on when we say we're in the third period. When we're in the third period, all the electrons are going into the n equals 3 principal energy level. So they are about the same distance from the nucleus. So that means that both of these atoms, sodium and magnesium, have the same core electrons, which means if I write the electron configuration of sodium and I write the electron configuration of neon, oops, that should be a 3s2, they both have the same noble gas. So they both have the same core electrons, and there are 10 of them. So remember that neon in brackets, those are core electrons. So there are 10 electrons in the core of sodium. There are 10 core electrons for magnesium. Now, that sodium has 11 protons, so the nucleus has a plus 11 charge. If I'm out here in the third principal energy level, the nucleus is shielded by these 10 core electrons. So the net charge affecting this 3s energy level in sodium is plus 1, the number of protons minus the number of core electrons. That's called the effective nuclear charge. So for sodium, the effective nuclear charge is plus 1. So there's a plus 1 charge pulling in on the outermost electrons here. When I go over to magnesium, I still have 10 core electrons, but now there are 12 protons. So the effective nuclear charge here is plus 2. Since the effective nuclear charge is greater, it's going to pull more on those 3s electrons because they're both about the same distance from the nucleus. So plus 1 is going to pull negative charges more than a plus 2 is going to pull more negative charges than a plus 1 or attract the negative charges more strongly. Okay. So here's a graph of the trend in radius for atomic um, for atoms period 2 period 3 4 5 and 6 so the reason why we call these trends is because they're not set in fast rules that the radius always decreases as you go from left to right because you notice when we get to period 4 and we start hitting transition metals there are exceptions to the trend but in general the radius goes down that's why it's a trend and you'll notice the further down the table we go, the higher energy levels, the more exceptions there are to the trend, and that's because the energy levels and sublevels are closer and closer together in energy so that there are more exceptions to the general trend. But what we'll focus on at when asking questions is the general trend and not so much the exceptions. 
Okay. So if I look at a periodic table, I should be able to arrange the elements in order of increasing atomic radius. So if I look at set A, what these have in common is they're all in the same period. So now I know the trend in a period is the biggest radius on the left, the smallest radius on the right. So the element out of these three that is furthest to the right is sulfur, so it's going to be smallest. Silicon is in the middle. Magnesium is to the left. So magnesium is biggest. Sulfur is smallest. For letter B, they are in the same group. So the smallest radius is the one in the lowest en energy level, or the lowest row number. The largest radius is in the highest row number. So that order would be N, P, and AS. Period 2, period 3, period 4. Now this third one, we have a mixture. Arsenic and antimony are in the same group. Arsenic and selenium are in the same period. So what we need to do is look at them two at a time. So let's look at arsenic and antimony first since they're the first two. They're in the same group. So since arsenic is in period four and antimony is in period five, arsenic has a smaller radius than antimony. Okay, now let's look at arsenic and selenium. Selenium is further to the right than arsenic, so selenium has a smaller radius than arsenic. So that is the order from smallest to largest radius for those three atoms. Hey, now let's look at ionic radius. Again, here's the technical definition. Um, you, don't, you should probably know what the definition is, but don't worry too much about it. Hey, for ions, cations are smaller than the parent atom. So we look at a sodium atom right here and a sodium ion over there. So the sodium ion is much smaller than the sodium atom. And that is due to the fact that if we look at the electron configuration of this sodium atom, the, la the outermost energy level is 3. For a sodium ion, the electron configuration is that. Now you notice the outermost occupied energy level is, period, is in level 2, n equals 2. Over here it's n equals 3. So that means a sodium ion is going to be smaller than a sodium atom. So when we look at anions, anions are always larger than the parent atom. So what happens when I take chlorine and add an electron and make it chloride? I add another electron. So that does two things. One, I have more electrons repelling each other, which means they're going to push each other further apart. And also, the effective nuclear charge is the same because the nucleus has not changed, which means that nucleus can't hold on as tightly to all the electrons in the outermost energy level. So the other thing we can look at is um, what happens when we have isoelectronic species, which means ions or atoms that have the same electron configuration. So for example, if we look at our chloride ion, chloride is 1s2, 2s2, 2p6, 3s2, 3p6. That has the same electron configuration as argon. 1s2, 2s2, 2p6, 3s2, 3p6. They are isoelectronic. But since chloride has a smaller effective nuclear charge, it's going to be the larger of the two. Argon has a greater effective nuclear charge, so it's going to have a smaller radius. That's what the third bullet means. So finally, let's look at this. Arrange these in order of increasing radius. So we know the negative ions are going to be bigger than the positive ions. So let's take a look at the two negative ions. They're in the same period, or actually they're in the same group. Sulfur is going to be smaller than selenium because sulfur is higher up on the periodic table than selenium. 
when I look at calcium, iron, and potassium, iron is the furthest to the right, so it's going to be the smallest. Potassium ion is the furthest to the left, so out of the positive ion, it's biggest. Calcium's in the middle, and iron is the smallest. So just by using the trends, we can put these in order of increasing radius.